Welcome to a special Play Like a Jet video edition. This is a short conversation on what's going on with the wide receiver position. It was supposed to be myself, Scott Mason, the host of the Play Like a Jet podcast, the thunder from down under, Luke Grant, who you can see right now, and the man behind the curtain, Mr. Chris Walker. Unfortunately, Chris, because he is the man behind the curtain and has so much going on, fell asleep and wasn't able to join us, but he'll be with us for a bunch of these. We're going to do a lot of these. We're going to do these fairly regularly, just quick, short, 10, 15 minute videos where we discuss whatever the big hot topic is of the moment. And right now it's the wide receiver position. Luke, real quickly, obviously everybody was going crazy over the possibility of the Jets getting a superstar wide receiver after word broke that they came very close to getting Tyreek Hill before he went to the Miami Dolphins. We know that they were in on Tyreek. Uh, excuse me, not Tyreek Hill. Of course, they were in on Tyreek Hill. They were also in on Calvin Ridley. And we know that they dipped their toe in the Amari Cooper water, ultimately didn't go down that road, and he went to the Browns for a fifth-round pick. I think that was the critical mistake, especially after Calvin Ridley was off the board. Tyreek Hill was sort of a pipe dream. I know they came relatively close, but obviously in the end, there's going to be another team, and the Dolphins were that team, and he picked that team. Now everybody was speculating about all these big receivers who are getting close to their contracts being up. And I want to run through them with you real quickly, Luke, and I'll give a quick synopsis of my thoughts and then I'll throw it to you. But the names that we kept hearing were Debo Samuel from the 49ers, A.J. Brown from the Tennessee Titans, the two receivers from the Seattle Seahawks, D.K. Metcalf and Tyler Lockett. Less so Lockett just because I think the other three guys were younger and they were sexier names and all. I reached out to some people that I know that are very plugged in both in Seattle and in Tennessee. And I was told no on all three. As far as Seattle goes, they're looking to still compete. They believe that if they do something at quarterback, which I believe is ultimately going to be make Baker Mayfield. And you may or may not think that's anything to write home about, but I do think that a healthy Baker Mayfield in a new setting gives him a fighting chance, especially with guys like Lockett, and with uh, DK Metcalf over there, I, it, it appears from everything I hear that they are not looking to move on from Metcalf. They may or may not be able to get a deal done with him, but ultimately, worst case scenario, they can tag him next year at the end, or rather at the end of this year, and then trade him the way that Green Bay did with Devontae Adams. Same holds true with A.J. Brown, although in the case of A.J. Brown, What I got back was about a paragraph, and it began with no way, not a chance in hell. And then I was told that it appears Tennessee is fairly close to a new contract with Brown. They expect to wrap it up probably before training camp, if not sooner. So it it looks like A.J. Brown is is very much not a possibility. And if you play it through, the Titans were the number one seed last year in the AFC. Henry has the knee injury, so you don't know what's going to happen with him. Robert Woods coming off a knee injury. They don't really have any reliable weapons except A.J. Brown, so it doesn't make any sense. Again, if on the slight chance they don't get that deal done that it looks like it's going to get done, they can always tag him and trade him next offseason. And then Debo Samuel, same thing that we just said as far as uh, A.J. Brown and D.K. Metcalf goes. Now, Jennifer Lee Chan, who's one of the best beat reporters out there who covers the 49ers had said yesterday that there was no way as far as she was concerned as far as she knew that Debo Samuel was getting moved and then today John Lynch came out and said that they are working on getting something done with both Nick Bosa and Debo Samuel they are not going to trade Samuel and again if anything goes south they would hold on to Samuel tag him next year and then trade him next offseason it wouldn't be this offseason 49ers were minutes away from the Super Bowl this year. They've got a rookie quarterback by all, for all intents and purposes, even though it's technically second year. Lance barely played last year. They are not going to take away his best weapon and hurt his development. It would be an insane move. There's no way Shanahan and Lynch are going to do that, and they confirmed that today at the owners' meetings. So forget about Debo Samuel. Forget about A.J. Brown. Forget about Tyler Lockett. Forget about D.K. Metcalf. Those guys are not going anywhere. And then Brandon Cooks, who a lot of people thought could be available, even though he's not as high a level receiver as Metcalf, Brown, or Debo Samuel. Today, Nick Casario, the general manager of the Tennessee Titans, poured cold water on that and said they are not looking to move Brandon Cooks. He's not getting traded. Basically, the gist of what Casario said is they weren't committing to re-signing him after this year, but for this year, they liked him. 
as a guy that can help the development of Davis Mills going into his second year, quarterback out of Stanford, and as a mentor to, to the wide receiver room, which has a lot of young, inexperienced wide receivers. So he's not getting moved. He may be available, not, he may be available next offseason, but not this offseason. So whether it's Lockett, whether it's Cooks, whether it's DK Metcalf, whether it's Debo Samuel, whether it's A.J. Brown, the story here is, if any of those guys end up getting moved, it will not be till next off season. So that is not going to be part of the Jets plan right now. Again, you go back to Amari Cooper, who they could have had. That was the most realistic target. They could have restructured with him the way the Browns did. They were nervous that Cooper wouldn't work with them. And that's ultimately why they didn't make the move for a fifth round pick. And now they're back to square one. Certainly possible, Luke, that somebody jumps in here and has a wide receiver that we're not expecting. Obviously, no one thought Tyreek Hill would be available. But I think right now, if you're a Jets fan, you have to be realistic about this and think that odds are you're not getting any kind of real difference maker at the wide receiver position, not even somebody like a Brandon Cooks. Forget about a really high-level superstar like A.J. Brown. You're probably not even getting somebody like Cooks. And so ultimately, maybe you get a roster filler kind of veteran sort of the way that they did last year with Keelan Cole, and then they go into the draft and we'll see what they do there. I'm not exactly sure who they like or where they would pick them. I assume it would be somewhere within the first 38 picks, somewhere in those first four draft picks, but that's where we're at right now. Yeah, I think people got very confused by the offseason and how frantic it's been and how big some of the trades are or have been. Devontae Adams, uh, obviously all the quarterback movement from Russell Wilson all the way down the chain. Uh, then you have the Tyree Kill news. And it was a disappointing three hours for Jets fans. It was 3 a.m. when I woke up in Australia. It was a roller coaster. Similar to almost every time there's one of these stories, the Jets just missed out. Uh, they end up as the bridesmaid. But I think it's clouded people's judgment over what teams are looking to do because the reason that Adams and Hill were looking for trades is because number one, they're going into their, you know, their third contracts. They're looking for their third deal. They're both getting $30 million, but both of these teams are also paying around $50 million to their quarterbacks per year. If you look at San Francisco, they can get out of Jimmy G right now and they have Trey Lance on a cheap. If you look at San Francisco, sorry, at uh, Seattle, they don't really have a quarterback right now. And if they get Baker Mayfield, they're not paying him extraordinary amount of money. Uh, same with Brandon Cooks in, in Houston as well. So they're not looking to get rid of receivers. Number one, some of those guys are on a rookie deal, speaking on Metcalf, Samuel, and AJ Brown. And their quarterback is also cost-effective as well. So I think that's got to clarify the picture. And people have to reassess. I know Joe Douglas jumped in hard on Tyreek Hill and he saw an opportunity, but I don't think that necessarily means that there's a fallback big deal just waiting in the wings. Uh, that was kind of a one in a million shot, maybe two in a million when you throw in Devontae Adams moving too. But holistically, I think it's unrealistic to expect another trade like that in the offseason, despite everything we've seen. And as you said, it's going to come down to the draft. I would have loved a Brandon Cooks or someone like that. You even a Robert Woods that you could rely on as a kind of wide receiver 1B, whatever you want to talk about. A guy who's a good runner, who can win inside and out, be a complement to Elijah Moore and Corey Davis. And then you make a decision between Corey Davis and that receiver in the offseason when there's no guaranteed money left and you move on. Ultimately, we're not there. We're back where we were last season. Maybe they bring in a, I don't know, a Jarvis Landry or someone like that. I don't want to see it, but I think it's going to be that chain moving 10 to 15 yard reception type receiver, that veteran on a one year contract, and then look to draft a rookie. Yeah, I think that's where the Jets are at right now. I don't think there's going to be much choice. It's certainly possible, like we said, that somebody pops up that we're not expecting, but of the guys that everybody's lusting over right now, they're not going to be available. They're not getting moved this off season. If they get moved at all, it wouldn't be till next off season. And like you said, this is why we were talking about Amari Cooper. This is why we were talking about Robert Woods, that one B type guy to help make Elijah Moore better, to take some of the pressure off him, to be a proven high caliber production guy that can come in here and help accelerate Zach Wilson's development in year number two. And now it looks like that's probably not going to happen. Joe Douglas is sitting around waiting for the opportunity to pounce. Maybe it comes, but it's looking less and less likely. So I think they're going to go into the draft and pick somebody, and then they'll fill out the roster with, I don't know about Jarvis Landry. I think he's going to want to go somewhere 
who has a better chance to win right away, but some sort of roster filler type of wide receiver, a depth guy. And we've talked about this, but rookie wide receivers generally are not going to produce on that 1B level in year number one. You're probably looking at a guy that's going to be maybe a three type receiver if he's good and stays healthy which is okay, but I just don't think that's anywhere near enough. I know that the Jets improved the tight end. They got two solid, if unremarkable, tight ends, but I just don't think that those guys move the needle enough, and certainly I don't think that getting a rookie, no matter where you get him, is going to move the needle enough, at least not in year number one. Now, you may get a guy who contributes year one and then becomes a really good receiver and a stud in year number two, but Really, what you were looking for was to accelerate Wilson's development in year two, and I don't know that they've done enough to do that. I would say that right now, Douglas has fallen short in that regard. We'll see what ends up happening. Maybe he pulls a rabbit out of his hat, or maybe he gets a rookie wherever that ends up being, whether it's in the first, second, third round, whatever, that ends up having a much greater impact year one than is traditionally expected. We'll see. But right now, that's pretty much where the Jets are at. And I think that if Jets fans are being realistic, they need to come to grips with the fact that very low odds exist that they're going to be able to get a real superstar established wide receiver before the 2022 season. Yeah, I think what I would say to people, again, looking at past draft classes, and you mentioned the rookies not necessarily being able to come in and produce at a high level like a wide receiver 1A, 1B type guy. Again, we've been clouded by the success of Jamar Chase. There's no Jamar Chase as a prospect. I'm not saying someone can't have his career in the NFL, but in the 2022 draft class, there is no Jamar Chase as a prospect. Jamar Jefferson and the, sorry, um, the uh, Jamar Jefferson, I'm having an absolute shocker. Sorry, Jefferson, when he came out of LSU, that was a bit of a freak scenario. Justin Jefferson. Thank you. You didn't expect Jefferson to come in and have a thousand 600 yard season or whatever it was he put up incredible numbers but that's the exception not the rule i don't think we can expect every receiver to come out and beat jefferson just because we've seen it recently while it's getting easy to play receiver tommy our friend over at play like a jet he's done tons of studies looking at less than 50 percent of first round wide receivers have ever had a 1000 yard season out of the last 40 taken only three i think two or three have had thousand yard seasons as a rookie usually that's four not- of them Four of them? Four of them, Luke. Yeah, it was Jefferson, Chase, Waddle, and A.J. Brown. I mean, usually you'd think, well, that's not a big deal. You don't need production in year one. These are rookies. They're going to take some time to develop. And that's, the, that's actually the correct way to look at players. But you hit the nail on the head, Scott. When you start looking at the development of a quarterback who's going into year two, who's short of some weapons, it becomes extremely important. And it amplifies the need for a wide receiver. And talking about the wide, sorry, the, uh, the tight ends quickly, yeah, we're going to play more 12. And we saw that Mike LaFleur wants to do some of that. But when you're behind or when you're in two-minute situations and these kind of keys, like the Jets are going to be in because this is not a 10-win football team, they need to play 11 personnel. And they're going to play at 35 to 40% of the time. And they're not going to get health all season long out of Elijah Moore and Corey Davis. It's unlikely with any receivers, never mind two that combined to miss 15 games last year. They needed a guy. He swung and missed. I understand it wasn't entirely his fault with the Tyreek Hill situation, but at the moment, his job's on the line to some degree. I think he's pretty safe for the next 18 months. But if Zach Wilson doesn't take that jump and the curve isn't trending in the right direction, I think he starts to feel his seat get pretty warm. Ultimately, I think adding those tight ends helps, but I don't think it moves the needle. They're solid tight ends, but we're not talking about someone who's a real difference maker like a George Kittle. If they had that, I wouldn't worry so much about another wide receiver, an established wide receiver. I think we both agree that what they needed to do here was add that established high-level receiver and then draft somebody maybe in the second round. Unfortunately, they weren't able to get that done, and it looks like they probably won't be able to do it before the 2022 season. So like you said, we just got to cross our fingers and hope that whoever they end up getting in here at some point in the draft makes a bigger impact in year number two of Zach Wilson than we're expecting. And that traditionally is what happens. And also we have to hope that Corey Davis bounces back and is more like that last season that he had in Tennessee than 
the 660 yards that he's averaged and of course all the drops that he had last year but luke we're going to do a bunch more of these this was a short one we're going to do a whole bunch of short videos on whatever the pressing issue is really appreciate you jumping on with me please go ahead and watch all luke's great film breakdowns and all the other stuff that's on the channel here make sure you listen to the play like a jet podcast daily seven days a week brand new episodes you know where to find them it's on google play stitcher apple spotify wherever you get your podcasts Follow Luke on Twitter at LukeGrant7. Follow me on Twitter at PlayLikeJet1. Thanks again for watching this video, and we'll catch you next time.